Hello, World Wide Web. I'm Decker Shadow, the internet personality with the best hair. With the Wii U coming soon, I can't wait to get my hands on Aliens Colonial Marines, but it's been a while since I've said anything about the Predator, so I'd like to... <sighs> Come on, what is it now? <sighs> hey, Decker, when are you going to review Twilight? Can't wait. Twilight? Why the hell would I review Twilight? I think it's well established by now that I generally deal with science fiction, action, and horror, and while Twilight might fall under horror, it's still not the style of film I usually cover, but if you want vampires that badly, fine. I've got a film for you. Released straight to DVD in June 2005, Four months prior to the first Twilight novel hitting the shelves, Charles Band produced his own take on vampires in a more modern setting, along with an interspecies love story and an age-old conflict. Was it a classic for the ages? It's Charles Band, of course not! But it is an interesting piece of movie history for those who say that absolutely no vampire films were coming out at that time frame before Twilight hit the scene. Nevertheless, let's tell into our victim's flesh and see what it tastes like. As this movie opens, we are immediately treated to flashbacks of an entirely different movie. Once upon a time, there was a master vampire named Ash. Hmm? This Ash evidently rules over a clan in Europe that consists entirely of people with American accents. His name is Monsieur Ash. He's a wealthy patron of the arts. A bit eccentric, perhaps? At this point, I should mention that Decadent Evil is a spin-off of the 1997 film Vampire Journals, which itself is a spin-off of the movie series Subspecies. For those who want the whole history, here it is. The first film in the series, Subspecies, was a direct-to-video movie from Charles Band's Full Moon Studios in 1991. Two years later, Bloodstone, Subspecies 2, would be released, and then Bloodlust, Subspecies 3, the following year. Then in 1997, the spin-off movie Vampire Journals was made, which follows the vampire Ash. Kind of like having a man named Corpse. But anyway, the year after that, the subspecies series would continue on its own with subspecies 4, Bloodstorm. Seven years after this run of straight-to-video vampire flicks, Charles Band's renamed studio, Wizard Entertainment, would revive the series in a spin-off of the spin-off, which is what we have here, Decadent Evil, in 2005. As this introduction points out, this movie follows the events around the vampire Morella, whom left Ash's clan in Europe going to America. Did you get all that? Good! Just so you know, having the inside scoop on this movie's long, sordid backstory makes absolutely no difference. It's a generic vamp flick. The only connection it has to the previous films is this very out-of-place intro. Whoop-de-doo! So, after this unnecessary three-minute introduction, and a further three-minute credit sequence composed of the cheapest effects available, we finally get to the actual movie, as we see a couple head into a strip club at night. Do I really have to list it for you? I don't know. No, 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 come on, come on, no, you promised. Don't chicken out on me now. I know. Uh, just how smooth of a talker is this guy supposed to be? I, I'm sorry, I find this to be a particularly hard sell. Hey, baby, how's it going? Hey, how about you and I go to the Olive Garden tonight? My treat. But afterward, you gotta go to the Pussy Den with me. Deal? Somehow, this is enough to get her to sit back and enjoy the same sex erotica as Spice stops by and gives her a lap dance while Bruce creepily watches. Oh, holy shit, that is incredible. Man, I'm gonna need a towel. Please, baby, you gotta do another one. Ah, nothing gets me off more than seeing my girlfriend is obviously not interested in people of my gender. When Spice invites the two of them to her place for a little more fun, of course Bruce is all for it and drags Tammy along, despite her showing more apprehension at this point. This is creepy. Are you kidding me? This is so cool. Mm, she's onto something. I mean, seriously, how can they afford the tax on this giant house on a stripper's wage? Spice begins stripping her down, but before they can get too far... I didn't hear you come in. Morella makes a cliché vampire entrance. After a very short exchange, she joins the festivities. Don't expect things to get too hot, though, as it takes only a couple seconds before she opens them up like a jug of V8. <sighs> if you're gonna edit in fake hissing, at least have the hissing worth using post-production to accomplish. 
I can hiss better than that straight from the mouth. But while they're feasting, the blonde hors d'oeuvre runs off, but fortunately for them, can't figure out how to unlock a door, and comes to a stop when she discovers something. Her complete incompetence when it comes to escape allows Morella to easily track her down and kill her off too, which she is evidently very OCD about. I'm almost there, Marvin. Okay. Only three to go. You would think with her being so close, she'd be rushing out to go after the flesh herself. Or at least, making plans to. You would think that! As we're down to two characters, it's time to introduce some more, as we see Sugar and Dex having sex! Because there haven't been enough erotic scenes in the last 15 minutes, I'm beginning to see a pattern with Charles Band movies. This scene tells us that Sugar is in love with Dex, but never lets him come to her place, as she swears her sister wouldn't like him very much. Oh, she'd like him fine. I'm sure he tastes great. Returning to her den, Morella interrogates her. You know I've expressly forbidden relationships with humans. But you never said why. Well, they are food. It's kind of like having a relationship with a potato. Also, you're dead. You must never see him again. Not in that way. Plutonic relations are permissible, but no playing with your food. She goes on to explain that she's a hypocrite on top of it, as she herself had a relationship with a human long ago whom was unfaithful. It was then I revealed to him my true lineage. I sent his whore to hell, quenched on her soiled blood. And what did you do to him? <laughs> For him I fashioned an appropriate retribution. Ah, so he's a little critter in the cage. Oh, I, I mean, that was only hinted at. You're, you're supposed to be surprised when it's revealed for real. Sounds like Marvin's hungry. His cage needs to be cleaned. No, 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 still not revealed yet. Remember, you don't know what Marv is. In the meantime, Spice distracts us from the obvious connection with a little online shopping as she convinces Studboy to meet her alone for the time of his life. And although I appreciate the idea of depicting old-world legendary creatures using modern technology, I must point out the fact that if you're going to practice homicide, it's usually best not to leave a digital trail. More importantly, though, Dex is awakened in the middle of the night as we are introduced to Ivan the Vampire Hunter, played by Phil Fondarko. He gives a generic backstory of the trail of murders that led him here, but personally, I love the completely insane look Dex gives him the whole time he's giving his speech. Rumor has it. Out of one of these vampires, feast on the primal blood of 10,000 victims, 10,000 souls. They will possess the power over all vampires, maybe even become invincible. Well, she shouldn't be running a strip club, she should be an insurance salesman. While this is going on, we find out how Spice's takeout dinner is faring. Hello. You must be Dark Lady. I'm Lester. Stud Boy! That's gotta be as disappointing as ordering a spring roll, opening the box, and finding a double whopper with extra onion. For Spice, though, hunger is the best aphrodisiac, as she warms up to Lester. I always appreciate a good meal, Lester. What? So, with him dead, there would obviously be an investigation, a chat logs file, the IP address is tracked... Well... In the real world, but in decadent evil, this was the perfect crime. Of course, Morella finds Spice there with no difficulty, and is very upset she didn't get first noms. I only have three more, and then I become invincible. Queen of the bloodline. Then shouldn't you go out and get the last three? I mean, three. You could just run out into the street and grab people at random and fill your quota before anyone could stop you. But instead of that, she orders Spice to go out and hunt her down a fresh body. After all, those last few steps are so much more rewarding when you don't do a fucking thing to accomplish them. But Sugar's fucking with Dex is how Ivan managed to track her down, along with the help of his divining cross, to the bag she conveniently left behind at Dex's place. Ah, uh, cute. Vampire with a driver's license. Hey, wait, wait a minute. Uh, undead girlfriends are one thing, but how the hell did she ever find a DMV that's open at night? With the address in hand, they set out to find the vampire's den. 
So let me get this straight. The Divining Cross was able to pick up the trace of sugar left on her bag at Dex's apartment, but it wasn't able to track the giant fucking mansion housing three vampires? We need a little more logical explanation to find that place. Back at the mansion, Sugar gets ready to clean Marvin's cage, but of course is distracted and leaves the cage door open like an idiot. It turns out to be Dex who cuts right to the chase. So it is true. So the whole time he's known her, he's been staring at her ass, not her smile. She tells him she'd never hurt him, and forces him out before Morella arrives, which allows him to confirm the situation to Ivan. Satisfied? I can't believe she's really one of them. Get over it, kid. Find yourself a nice girl who doesn't mind the sunlight. Screw that. Get yourself a gamer girl, someone who isn't afraid of the commitment required to hit max level. Ivan prepares to head in and kill them off, but Dex refuses to allow him to slay his girlfriend, so they find a compromise. But you can't go in like that. They can smell a mortal a mile away. Jesus. I thought vampires hated garlic. They do. But this bloodline can't smell it. It'll mask your scent. Uh, their amazing sense of smell can't smell garlic. Garlic powder. You know, there's modernization, and then there's just stupid. They head in, and Dex tracks down Sugar immediately, but before we can get anywhere with that, Spice comes home with Nameless Hooker. So you brought a guest? How nice. Oh, I see how this is. You two are into the kinky shit. Send me an extra 40 bucks, but by the looks of this place, I think you can't afford it. <sighs> I've seen actual porno movies with better acting than that. They chain her up and leave her in bed for a while. Well, is this the kind of meal that tastes better after you let it sit? Huh, no, they just had to leave her there long enough for us to see Marvin creep up on her, but get scooped up and re-caged in short order, making that little event completely pointless. Unless we really needed to establish the critter is horny. I mean, come on, it's a Charles Band movie. Of course it is! Now that that's taken care of, she has no problem feasting on the woman immediately, but Spice finds out that Sugar has been packing to leave and decides to throw her under the supernatural bus. Someone's planning on a little trip. My dear, I'm so disappointed in you. Did you dare bring him in here after I expressly forbade it? Ah, uh, you forbade her giving him some undead head. You didn't say anything about him not coming over. She heads off to hunt him down while Spice enjoys a schadenfreude. How's it feel to be the bad one for once in your life? Because there's a sibling rivalry between them. <laughs> they just, you know, forgot to mention it until now. Spice taunts her some more before Ivan shows up, and we get our epic showdown. You see this sugar? He thinks he's Van fucking Helsing. And while he's clearly a threat, let's just sit back and watch as he prepares to kill us. Spice disarms Ivan, but postures long enough that he's able to easily rearm himself and give her one seriously nasty splinter. Morella somehow felt this too, but notices something else. Fee, fi, fo, fum. What? I smell the blood of a human. <sighs> okay, I guess we can pinpoint this part of the script where the writers clearly stopped giving a fuck. But anyway, Sugar goes on to examine Spice, who it appears has turned into a pile of... potting soil. Seriously, first with the garlic powder, and now you can't even get some actual ash? Sorry, it doesn't work like that. Well, why the fuck not?! As Dex is still missing in action, Ivan goes ahead to kill Sugar while he's at it, but suddenly... Dad? Did you catch that, everyone? Now it's the big reveal! Come on, be surprised, come on. Oh, still haven't figured out that twist? That's all right, Morella is kind enough to explain it to Dex. I said you'd be lucky if I killed you. Perhaps I'll turn you into a homunculus instead. You know what a homunculus is? 
It's a miniature artistic representation of a human, sometimes used in alchemy. It's a tiny prehistoric human, part reptile. Uh, mammals derived from reptiles long before hominids first appeared. It's like saying you've got a prehistoric man that's part fish. With the blood of a humunculus, I tricked my lover into drinking it. Perhaps we should go and meet him. So the big magic in this movie is you are what you eat. Which actually does make sense, honestly. I mean, considering how many morons these women have eaten. She brings Dex to the set of the climax, and he's nice enough to sit there with Sugar quietly instead of actually trying to escape while Morella is clearly predisposed. Ivan attempts the same trick to take out Morella, but that obviously doesn't work. I haven't survived this long by sheer luck. Certainly I won't be done in by a simple parlor trick. Oh, maybe the villain in this movie is actually going to use a hint of intelligence! What the hell? I gave it a shot. Before you do me in, are you going to give me a minute to say goodbye to my father? You can't do that much for me, can't you? Why, of course I can. I'm not completely heartless. Ugh, never mind. Ivan says goodbye and quite obviously pulls out a last-ditch attempt to take out Morella. You think it'll work? I'm not sure about these details on how to kill the vampire! Could you repeat that? So, Ivan... Uh... I'm sorry, this isn't going to work for me. Could, did you got any holy water I could maybe use instead? Now that he's swallowed the blood, he wastes no time in allowing her to feed on him, providing the 9,999th primal blood. Though I'd figure after him she'd only be at about 9,998.5, but oh well. Now Dex and Sugar have fled the estate, but Morella still finds them so fast they might as well have been in the same room. However, she's not doing so well. Is she dead? She can't be. Well, maybe if she had eaten you know, anybody in this city while chasing you down. But of course she's turned into what this movie calls a homunculus, leading to our happy ending. Well, I don't even know what the hell that was. This movie's set up as your basic vamp flick with little exception. There's nothing too special to say about the story, but the execution is of note, but in quite a negative way. The way this movie starts out has promise and isn't done too bad from a base entertainment standpoint, but as it goes on it seems to spiral lower and lower, and from the opening to the ending it somehow gets less and less exciting. The acting is stiff and emotionless. I get it that Morella was supposed to be cold, but when she's making decisions based on gut reactions, she could at least show a little feeling. Phil Fondarco doesn't do a bad job, but he doesn't pull off a grand performance either. Like most of the actors, he's just kind of there. In fact, I think the best acting in this movie came from John Schaefer as Studboy, which doesn't sing the highest praises for this film. The sets are very limited, and the lighting is so dark the few different locations all end up looking very similar anyway, and at only an hour long, this movie still was hard to make it all the way through. It's the kind of movie I guess you could put in the background while having some drinks with your friends. Entertaining enough while you're still sober, and by the time it gets boring you'll be too buzzed to care, giving Decadent Evil two fucking puppets out of five. Oh, and there's a sequel! As far as my research tells me, Decadent Evil 2 is the last in the subspecies phylogeny. Though, there is good news. I don't own it! <sighs> Thank God. Thank you all for watching, I've been Decker Shadow, and remember, Twilight's a romance novel! I don't do that.
been pretty busy for an old bitch.